Every new Transformers toy line is sure to include a figure or two of the franchise's flagship character, Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. Transformers Animated was no exception, with a release at almost every conceivable price point to ensure anyone who wanted to buy him could, and at any scale. Optimus Prime. Today I'd like to walk you through all of it, from the American to Japanese markets, from the mainstream to the obscure, culminating in 2023's Legacy United Animated Optimus Prime. This is every animated Optimus ever made. Optimus Prime was the centerpiece of the 1984 Transformers toy line, designed by Hiroyuki Obara and Shoji Kawamori. The Autobot leader transformed into a Freightliner semi-trailer truck. Slapped in the forefront of the cartoon, the comic, and the toy line, children became invested in this character to the point that his popularity let him survive death on multiple occasions. Optimus would receive some sort of representation in nearly every preceding toy line. When Transformers Animated entered development under the working title Hero, he was naturally going to be a star, with early concept art drawn by Eric Canetti and Watanabe Yoshihiro. He was characterized by head writer Marty Eisenberg as an inexperienced and naive leader with big aspirations of heroism who might eventually grow into the character we know. Series art director Derek J. Wyatt was soon assigned to the series under the animated surname, and Prime was one of the first three characters he designed, largely stylizing his Generation 1 appearance, but this time with a fire engine cab alternate form. There wasn't much iteration until his final appearance in the cartoon that debuted in December of 2007. Hasbro's corresponding toy line officially hit shelves in June of 2008. We'll go through this video size class by size class, starting with Legends Class Optimus. It's a bit redundant to produce a Legends Optimus when Optimus was always a legend, but whatever. I'm gonna make this joke in every single video, by the way. Designed by Hasbro's Bill Raleigh, this mold of Optimus was released as part of the Target-exclusive Stealth Lockdown 3-pack, alongside a Legends Bumblebee and a Predator-inspired Transparent Deluxe Lockdown. Legends figures were generally unpopular in stores at the time, and Hasbro opted not to give animated Legends their own individual releases, only sticking the four of them into multi-packs instead. Due to massive collaboration between Hasbro and Animated's creative team, the figures not only look accurate to the show, but the characters transform accurately to the toys. Prime's transformation is lifted straight from his original Generation 1 counterpart. You pop his arms out of his waist region, fold them outwards, fold his legs down and rotate them at the waist, then pop out his head, and there you go, you've got a robot. The Legends release has one minor compromise due to its small scale. Rather than a waist swivel, the top of the chest is the source of the rotation leaving the vehicle's bumper and grill on the back of the robot with a faux grill on his chest. Although the mold was designed for the animated toy line, its delay meant they actually hit store shelves after the animated Legends got an individual release shoved into the Transformers Universe toy line. It was also available for purchase in a 3-pack with Prowl and Bumblebee. Here, B and Prowl have red insignias to match the other figures in this respective toy line and Optimus was identical in every way, except for slightly darker, less glossy blue plastic, and slightly lighter, more glossy gray plastic. Maybe to ensure every figure in Stealth Lockdown was an exclusive. After the series cancellation and Hasbro's termination of its toy line, the series was localized for a Japanese release in 2010. The Japanese toy company Takara Komi, a partner of and subsidiary of Hasbro, modified and re-released the figures previously enjoyed by American audiences. Its Legends class was referred to as Easy Collection. The Universe version of Optimus was released unchanged in Easy Collection Volume 3 Blind Packs. A partially transparent Optimus was available in the Easy Collection Limited Clear version set, with the other three Legends given away as Prize D during a raffle promotion at Family Mart stores. Imagine driving down the highway in a semi-transparent fire engine. Fully transparent versions of the Legends characters were also available. A translucent red version of Optimus was given away at Japanese Toys R Us stores for customers who made purchases of 3,000 yen or more. Easy Collection Volume 4 blind packs included two new releases of Optimus from this mold. A black, gold, and red release of Optimus called Elite Guard Optimus, speculated to be based on the color scheme of Cybertron Galaxy Force Optimus, was available as part of Easy Collection Volume 4 blind packs. Also available in Easy Collection Volume 4 was a version painted entirely gold possibly an homage to Generation 1's Golden Lagoon episode. Or maybe it's just gold. Who knows? A toy line called Mini Easy Collection would have contained an even smaller 2-inch Optimus, but it was ultimately cancelled, perhaps because these are already small enough. There's not much to say about the Legends figures. Nothing to complain about. They work through the limitations that come with this scale excellently and give us fully functioning Transformers figures. What more can you want? Jumping up a size class, we've reached the Activator's Wave, a line of figures that transform with just one click of a spring-loaded button. 
Then you gotta manually do most of the work yourself, but hey, still cool. Designed by Bill Raleigh, Activator Optimus transforms by tapping his siren bar. Then you got a little more work before you're done. This figure was released completely unchanged in Takara Markets, available exclusively in the Animated Super Collection Volume 1. These two Activator Super Collections were the only way to get these releases in Japan. In American markets, he received a repaint called Armor Up Optimus, presumably an homage to Star Convoy. Some colors are swapped around to make him uglier, and a yellow thing is on his chest now. I guess this is him armored up. The person who sold this to me on eBay is apparently a viewer, and they left a nice note. Hi, don't dox me! In Takara Markets, the special edition of the cool manga, a loose and occasionally alternate retelling of Transformers Animated, came packed in with a transparent Activator Optimus Prime. They wanted to make sure this special set included the version that was most likely to break if you just barely touch it. The core gimmick of Activators definitely detracts from the appearance of both modes, but I appreciate the effort to do something to make this line distinct, because if these were just standard transforming figures, these and the Legends would kinda make each other redundant. The next size class is Bumper Battlers, a line of little vehicles designed to transform upon impact. The flip up prompted by pushing in on the bumper. My name is Optimus Prime. The Bumper Battlers are yet another example of unrealistic male beauty standards in media. Designed by Vicky Stratford, Bumper Battlers Optimus has a wide array of phrases, which can be heard by pressing the Autobot insignia on his roof. Vehicle mode. They'll never see us coming. Go, go, go! Autobot, battle mode. Bring it on, Decepticons! In reality, this Autobot insignia is pushing a pen which pushes another button inside the core of the vehicle, this being the real source of the SFX. You can tell David K just put his all into this session. Unscrewing the battery compartment beneath the vehicle reveals three official Hasbro branded AAA batteries. These alone would make any kid's Christmas. This mold was too perfect to go to waste. Nightwatch Optimus is painted dark blue and yellow, inspired by the legendary unforgettable moment of the series where he paints himself dark blue and yellow. The TF Wiki posits that this is not David K, but a sound alike? I personally find that unlikely. We're taking that driver down. We're taking that driver down. Sounds like David K to me. Just a particularly unenthusiastic David K. All I really have to say about the Bumper Battlers is that I would not own these if I were not making this video. <laughs> Arriving at the deluxe class price point, we've reached the Cybertronian Optimus Mold, designed by Eric Siebenhaler and Shogo Hasui. This figure was designed to resemble his pre-Earth appearance in Transforming Rollout Part 1, as well as various flashbacks later in the series. His limited screen presence just couldn't justify a Voyager price point, I suppose. It's definitely a bit of an awkward figure. It's very skinny and lanky for Optimus, with very small shoulders. These proportions have been called gorilla-like by many cultural scholars over the years. Annoyingly, there's no thorough way to clip the roof down. It's all just floppily resting here, and I wish it could have tabbed in better. Like most figures in the American release of the toy line, this deluxe Optimus had a non-show accurate silver Autobot insignia, something Derek Wyatt never liked. It comes with a pretty weak rendition of his axe. The roof of the vehicle serves as a removable shield the Prime can wield on his arm. You can also remove the blade from the handle and make it a short-range weapon. Or you can clip the shield to the axe to form a mega axe for Optimus Prime to wield. None of those words are in the Bible. Somehow the Legends figure is able to capture his official transformation pretty one-to-one, -one, yet the Deluxe isn't. The whole cab flips an accordions down, revealing a fake grill on Prime's waist while the real grill gets buried deep inside the assembly. Then you can fold out the arms and pull down the legs. And there, you have the strange, confusing monstrosity known as Deluxe Cybertronian Optimus. Yeah, that's about accurate. There may be a reason for the jinkiness. I have a hunch regarding what they were going for. This product's primary feature was intended to be a swinging axe in transformation, and I believe this is referring to Prime's transformation diagram provided to the show's animators. 
where his axe remains in his hand through this whole transformation and swings over his head by the end of the process. I believe Takara and Hasbro initially developed the figure with this functionality in mind. That would explain why the axe is extremely truncated, bends in several strange places, and why the character's hands can't fold into the wrists or rotate or even move at all, fully visible in the back of the vehicle mode. However, it seems they learned this function wasn't attainable midway through development, because partway through transformation, you're forced to remove the axe from his hands. It can't achieve what happens in the transformation diagram. Hell, it can barely hold it like this. I feel like I'm straining the plastic when doing this. This is the entire range of motion when holding the weapon with both hands. As such, this swinging axe mechanic wasn't advertised as a feature of the toy. It seems to me that they sacrificed a lot in terms of accuracy and functionality to support this gimmick, only to abandon it midway through production, leaving a very strange figure as a result. Of all the deluxe Voyager and Leader figures produced for Animated, I think this is easily the weakest one. This was definitely one of their earliest figures, and I would not be surprised if this was the earliest figure produced for the line. And it served as their learning curve as they transitioned from the blockier Unicron trilogy to the hyper-stylized designs of Animated. Takara's release of deluxe Voyager and Leader animated figures had a shiny, glossy finish and show-accurate red insignias, but were otherwise identical. Here is Takara animated Cybertronian Optimus. It was only available in a two-pack called The Beginning Showdown, Optimus Prime slash Megatron. Alongside a deluxe Cybertronian Megatron to depict their confrontation and transform and rollout part one. Notably, this deluxe Megatron had no battle damage, whereas the American release exclusively did. Returning to North America, in the late 2000s and early 2010s, the Transformers convention BotCon was graced with an official license from Hasbro, and used this as an opportunity to release official fiction and repaint existing toys as new characters. At one point, it was proposed that this mold could be repurposed as Kickoff and as Cup. Obviously, neither came to fruition. Optimus Prime's Deluxe Earth Mode features much of the exact same engineering and parts, but it is a marginal improvement. Designed by Eric Siebenhaler, Hasbro's release was available in the Optimus Prime vs. Megatron at the Battle Begins 2-pack, covered in battle damage which isn't particularly accurate to anything that happens in the series. Now you can see how it all started with the Optimus Prime and Megatron DVD and figure pack. Transformers. I'm not sure why Optimus is in his Earth Mode fighting Cybertron and Megatron now that I think about it. He definitely did not look like that when the battle began. The two-pack also included a DVD showcasing Transform and Rollout Part 1, an episode where Optimus doesn't have this Earth Mode at all. But hey, at least we got a pretty decent show-accurate axe. It also has smokestacks on the back, which fire trucks are famously known for having. They are completely removable, though. Assuming my crackpot theory is correct, it seems they realized the axe swinging gimmick compromised much of Cybertronian Prime's functionality, because they abandoned it entirely. Now the fists fold up into the wrists, and the axe simply clips into a hole on the back of the pelvis for optional vehicle mode storage. The transformation follows the same process as the Cybertronian version. You accordion the whole strange chest assembly together, revealing the fake grill and burying the real one. The only difference is that the siren bar folds down onto his back now, rather than staying with the arm as a shield. And look, he has a battle mask this time. Then you fold the arms out, bring the legs down, etc., and you've got this complete robot. The Cybertronian form had a freely spinning waist and calves, making it easy to align incorrectly when condensing him into vehicle mode. It seems like they recognize this problem because the Earth mode has intentionally limited waist articulation, so that the legs can't get reversed during the transformation progress, thus eliminating a lot of confusion from younger fans. And from me, who couldn't figure out how to do it yesterday. I'd call him a marginal improvement over the previous version. The parts don't just flop down with gravity when you're transforming him but it's still not the best. You could also pick up this version of the figure in the two-pack entitled The Revenge of Black Arachnia, implying that she gave him this battle damage if you purchased this one. When Takara got their hands on this figure, they said, what if we made it good? And then they did, but they made it near impossible to acquire. This rare version of Deluxe Optimus without any battle damage was available as prize B at a lottery held by Family Mart stores, earning it the name Family Mart Optimus in a lot of collector circles. An interesting fun fact is that a figure we'll discuss soon, Voyager Windblade Optimus Prime, had it been released in US markets, would have featured this Optimus as the base. Stay tuned to see me recreate that combination for the first time on Western soil. Probably the first time. Probably not the first time. Takara wasn't done with this mold, they're crazy over there. A semi-translucent version was packed in with Rodimus in the Sons of Cybertron 2-pack. Congratulations to Cybertron for birthing two beautiful baby boys. This one, straight out of the sealed box, is loose as hell. 
But wait, there's more. Only 1,000 units of a shiny gold version of Optimus were released, alongside an accompanying Megatron figure. From August 1st to September 30th, Japanese residents could enter a lottery to attain one. This came out after the Little Legends version. Who knows if this was an intentional homage or if multiple departments decided to make a gold Optimus. I'm sure it's not the most novel idea, especially given a pretty notable G1 episode had gold characters. The deluxe Optimus across both its forms definitely strike me as Takara and Hasbro's learning curve to figure out Derek J. Wyatt's style. They have a lot of shortcomings, and I'm not the biggest fan of them, but they're still cool to have. And finally, we've reached the Voyager price point. The figure's primary release, designed by Eric Siebenhaler and Shogo Hosue, looks really good. There are no glaring inaccuracies between the figure and Prime's appearance in the series. This figure came with an interesting option of accessories, the worst axe yet with a blade larger than his torso, and a water squirter that supposedly actually works. For storage and vehicle mode, these weapons can combine into something and plug into the trailer hitch, for a final result that is still just half of a fire truck. They can also clip onto his back to form a jetpack. Mom, I want Wingblade Prime! No, we have Wingblade Prime at home. Wingblade Prime at home. At one point, animated Voyagers were proposed to have figurines of the human characters included as accessories. Prime was once going to include the human supervillain Nanosec, who he faces off with in the episode of the same name, but this was phased out during the development process. On that note, I failed to mention in my previous Prowl video that he was originally envisioned with a spring release elbow to fling his shurikens, but this was also abandoned during development. Clicking this lever in the back of his neck flips his battle mask up and down. Pre-COVID, post-COVID. To transform him, you're gonna follow the classic transformation pattern outlined by the 1984 release, the way God intended. You pluck his arms out from the side of the cab, forming the silhouette of his waist. From here, you'll take the truck bed that looks suspiciously like two legs and convert it into two legs. There's a nice mechanic where you flip the back wheel under, then guide the front wheel into its place to achieve the one wheel on each side look. This figure falls victim to what was referred to internally as drama in transformation. Weird gears make it so that when you click this button, this happens! Oh my god, let's see if mine does that! Yeah, no, this doesn't work. <laughs> this has never worked for like anyone. What's the point of this being here? You, so you're supposed to push this lever, and it's supposed to spin, but it doesn't do it very well. You gotta sort of help it and then peg it in, which I've heard this peg likes to break on some people. Say what you will, but they did succeed in adding drama to this transformation. One thing left to do, pop out his head and you've got a sick ass robot. Takara animated Optimus, figure TA01, is once again coated in a shiny metallic sheen with a red and white Autobot insignia, but is otherwise identical to its American release. A fire engine so clean you could eat right off of it. From August 3rd to 8th, 2010, a black and cyan version of the mold was available for purchase during the Transformers Museum event at Saibu department stores in Japan. Only 300 units were ever produced. I have a problem. The Allspark Almanac 2 later retconned this toy into a character in fiction. Nemesis Prime, naturally. The arguable main event of animated Optimus Prime figures is Wingblade Optimus Prime, based on his armor upgrade appearance in Season 3's finale, Endgame. The Hasbro release was cancelled pretty late in the game, but it was still able to squeak its way into existence in Japan, as figure TA-38. Packed in with a transparent Voyager Optimus, likely for exclusivity purposes, the armor faithfully captures a look of its series counterpart, with adjustable wings, wrist guards, and the shoulder cannons that he never once used in the episode. Seriously, what are these? They're designed to resemble the water squirter that came with the original Voyager, but he built this armor to fight Megatron. I don't see any in-universe justification for these being water squirters. But if they fire artillery, then why did he never use them? To attach it, you just align it with the siren bar on his back and push. And it holds pretty damn well. The figure also includes a cheaper, lesser version of the Magnus Hammer than what was packed in with Leader Class Ultra Magnus. The set is foolish enough, I mean generous enough, to include the original axe and water squirter that came with the initial release of the Voyager. However, the Wingblade armor combines into a trailer as well. This I've gotta see. Out with the old, in with the new. I guess this is better. 
It's gonna be very difficult to drive in traffic when your wings are cutting into the cars to the left and right of you. Despite the transparent figure, the armor itself is coated with a glossy metallic sheen that makes it look most coherent with Takara's TA-01. And here's how the armor looks on the Hasbro version, which I'm sure is how many people have it displayed. Here's how the armor looks on the Deluxe Optimus its original intended pack-in. According to the TF Wiki, the armor is fully compatible with this version. However, I can confirm that is not true. Not unless you have a ton of scotch tape. There is absolutely no method to clip the wing blade pack onto his back. This figure would have needed some retooling for compatibility with the armor, likely just replacing this siren bar to resemble the Voyagers. An Elite Guard version of the figure was available as a mail order exclusive from Million Publishing in Japan. Released in 2011, this was one of the very final animated figures released in an official capacity. And this was also the most difficult version of Optimus to track down for this video. Early promotional artwork implied this figure would have the wing blade jetpack, but we can't have shit apparently. It shares this paint job with the Easy Collection version released the previous year. If this were a coincidence, that would be utterly insane, so I'm assuming this was on purpose. Let's pivot and return to North America. Transformers Animated was the subject of BotCon's 2011 convention, and the Voyager Optimus mold was redecoded twice, as the Motormaster and Toxitron, both of whom received an appearance in the stunt -a con job comic written by Marty Eisenberg. The Motormaster was available alongside the other four stunt -a cons in that year's box set. He once again transforms into a fire engine cab, and has the exact same accessories originally packed in with the mold, along with a new square head based on Derek Wyatt's design. Toxitron looks just as good. Apparently he was a legendary cancelled toy, and this was his first actual physical release. Only 1500 units were produced, packed into a set with animated sideswipe. Toxitron uses the original Prime's head, justified in fiction as him being a clone of Prime, with a personality ripped directly from DC's Bizarro. While his plunger from the comic wasn't included, the original weapons were. His water squirter redetailed to resemble a slime cannon. Toxitron was originally envisioned with the wing blade armor, but Bokkan soon learned they could not access any Takara molds for their convention exclusives. Had it reached Hasbro markets, it would have been a different story. Further redecos of this mold as Powered Convoy, Action Master Prime, G2 Motor Master, and the Protectobot Hotspot were also proposed by BotCon, but they never came to fruition. That is a whopping seven releases of the Voyager Optimus mold, and they all look phenomenal together. What would you do if seven fire engine cabs of a variety of colors and patterns all race towards you at furiously high speeds? That would be the best day of my entire life. Let's have a squirt off. Ugh. Well, this is the only one that had water come out of it. This one wins. There is a genuine non-zero chance I'm the first person who's ever put water in like half of these. Had animated survived for another year, we would have been graced by the Power Master Optimus Prime armor, an upgrade he would have received in the fourth season at Hasbro's request. An extensive orthographic sketch was revealed in the Allspark Almanac 2. Looking closely at the presented Optimus designed by Eric Siebenhaler, you could tell it was going to be a completely new mold. Note the ball-jointed shoulders, the comparative size of the screw holes, and the forearm cable not present on any other version. This core figure would have likely been roughly deluxe-sized, for the armored-up version to scale properly with the Voyager-class Marauder Megatron that began development a little earlier. The armor would fold up to form the fire engine's full trailer featured in many episodes of the cartoon. His actual arms would fold into his chest to bulk it up, and larger arms would then attach to the side. Derek Wyatt was notably never fond of this design and never got a chance to go over it. Eric Siebenhaler confirming to me that there was plenty of time for this figure to change at Derek's request, if not for the cancellation of the toy line and the halting of its production. Derek would have preferred Power Master technology to function in a similar manner to his 1980s namesake, giving a go at his own take modeled after God Jinrai from Super God Master Force. While the figure was proposed to include a minicon, Eric tells me it was never given any sort of identity and it may very well have never made it into the show if Marty Eisenberg didn't see a purpose for it. The armor was intended to be compatible with Sentinel Prime, though Eric tells me they had not begun discussing the specifics of that compatibility, and that Sentinel may have needed to be a new figure entirely. While not an official release, the third-party Transformers designer Sam's Forge has 3D modeled and printed an armor set compatible with the original Voyager. 
I've seen it with my own eyes and it's phenomenal. These files are available for download and printing. And the Magnus Hammer Sam's created is far away the most gorgeous, show accurate rendition compared to the other two options. It is my go-to for display. On that note, the Transformers Animated Upgrade Kit DX9 D01 Heroes Toolkit 08 contains a phenomenal rendition of the character's axe with an attachable extension for the handle. When it comes to animated, leave the toys to Hasbro, but leave the weapons to the fans. You thought we were done? How naive. We've only now reached the Supreme Size Class, which gave us Rollout Command Optimus Prime. There are no known designers for this figure because no hero was brave enough to claim credit. With the largest budget and largest scale, this is about as show accurate as you can really get as far as vehicle mode goes. This stripe is blue instead of black, but who cares? The robot mode, though, falls victim to a very hunched posture, and his stumpy neck frankly makes it look like his head isn't jutting out all the way. Great news, he has a red and white insignia. Bad news, it's smack dab on the center of his chest because these obvious hinges are blocking its intended spot on the arms. To transform him, you just roll him across the ground and he basically transforms himself. That makes it annoying if you're a kid who just wants to roll the vehicle across the ground. Too bad, he's gonna be a robot. With amazing auto spin technology. He left filthy tire tracks on my table. You guide the legs down from there and bada bing, bada boom, you have... I was gonna say you have a robot, but more accurately, you have an expensive husk of plastic with no articulation at all beyond a severely limited range of motion in the legs. You have a waste of $50. Despite the size and scale, this has the same limitation as the Teeny Legends version, where the vehicle's bumper winds up on the back with a faux grill in the front. I think the placement of the battery compartment might offer some new inspiration to the Tumblr shipping artists. I don't know whose idea it was to put it here, but Hasbro should give that person a raise and then fire them. Clicking this lever on his axe handle causes it to activate. This is easily the most exciting part of the entire toy. Pushing this button lets you hear the glorious voice of David Kay, even with a moving faceplate to simulate speech. So true, David. The Bumper Battler had like, what, 20 phrases? This one has two. Bring it, bring it on. My name is Optimus Prime. Bring it on. Tapping the siren bar also produces lights and sounds. And swinging his arms creates a few noises. Takara's release of the Supreme Class mold was called Optimus Prime Light and Sound. A singular light and a singular sound. It's covered in that metallic finish head to toe, and tapping the insignia lets you hear the voice of his Japanese voice actor, Hiroki Takahashi. So true, Hiroki. You can tell this figure was selling well because he was the only Supreme Class animated figure, and he was released at the very beginning of the line. One has to question if an Omega Supreme toy was planned to release in this line, given that it's named after him. For Omega I Supreme? Think, yeah, that... I mean, we, 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 when Derek and I were kind of mapping out what he was going to look like in his robot mode, I kind of had planted some seeds, like, I need to help Derek make this, like, functionally work so the toy could look like it, so... Um, I had pitched it a couple of times, like I wanted to do it as a designer, but you know, uh, making a toy that you know we knew was going to be a, a $50, $60 toy was not something that they wanted to commit to at that time. I would like to propose a conspiracy theory that this toy didn't sell well, and that's part of the reason Hasbro wouldn't commit to doing Omega Supreme in the same size class. I have no proof, just gumption and spirit. Let's round out Transformers Animated's original run by looking at Optimus Prime's merchandise, which there was too much of. A lot of this isn't even on the TF Wiki at all, so someone better get on that. One quick rule. We are not going to cover any merchandise that simply has Optimus Prime slapped on it. If so, we play a sick game of Rage Cage for this video. No, the merchandise has to be a physical representation of Optimus Prime himself. Saving the best for first, here is his McDonald's toy. He's one of a line of six, which are gloriously and objectively the best representations of these characters in toy form. 
Transformers toys change from vehicle to robot. There's one Transformer toy inside my McDonald's Happy Meal. To make him a robot, you fold down his single large leg, fold out his arms, and pop out his head. Even McDonald's was able to get his transformation correct. What was the Supreme figure's problem? McDonald's release in France was a different story. There, the figures had additional paint applications. The Optimus in question looks a lot more complete, so to speak, with much more of the coloration from his character model carried over. They also got Blitzwing, because France loves its citizens more. Brazilian markets received only a line of four Jumpstarter animated figures, because Brazil loves its citizens less. You pull it back, watch it drive, and flip into what is supposedly a robot. This is a truck, everyone. No matter what you say or think, this is a truck. Hasbro markets were lucky enough to get this figurine as part of the Transformers animated Target exclusive battle game. Just look at him, what a man. And the alternate packaging resembles Prime's cab itself. The Optimus Prime Battle Blaster is a faithful recreation of Prime's full vehicle mode, the only representation it got in toy form. Let me show you its gimmick. First, you grab this handle, then you stick your other hand deep into Prime's rectum. It really helps if you pretend you're giving him a colonoscopy. Then you pull. My name is Optimus Prime. My name is Optimus Prime. In animated, the Autobots don't use weapons. They become weapons. Imagine if during the final battle with Megatron, Optimus just transformed into this. Could have gone hard. Flipping him back triggers the toy's other phrase. Transform and roll out. Transform and roll out. Tapping the Autobot insignia on the roof activates licensed sounds. and pulling a trigger inside the trailer activates a singular blaster firing noise. Transformers Prime sound design be like. His battery compartment is only accessible in his weapon mode. Unscrewing it reveals three officially Hasbro branded AAA batteries, which stands for Alcoholics Anonymous Anonymous. Ever wanted to see a grown man try on a Halloween costume designed for six year olds? This won't even go up. <laughs> this is as wide as it gets. You can barely put your leg through it. Fuck, okay. Off I go. There were two variations of each one more form fitting and one with elevated shoulders. Both were used the same mask. And let's complete the set with Derek Wyatt's own Optimus Prime and Bumblebee trick-or-treat baskets. I promise it looked this messed up when I got it. And the holiday spirit shall never end. Transformers Animated got a limited run of Christmas ornaments. This right here is exactly what Jesus Christ died for. I have a problem. The Optimus Prime hide and fun elite tent is sure to get you laid. Let's check it out. This is my live vlog inside of the Optimus Prime tent. <sighs> Holy shit. Yeah, I don't necessarily fit inside of here. Uh, it's not very tall as I am sitting down and my head's crunching the entire fort to the side. But regardless, I'm having a good time. Stay alert gamers, there's a secret backdoor hatch. Let's... Let's investigate it, shall we? <laughs> oh, Optimus Prime didn't see that one coming. The Shift Tech handheld game features a little playable minigame with Optimus as its main character. And the device, of course, resembles him. When you yank it like this, Optimus transforms in-game. Let's see some gameplay. Watch your back, Fortnite! Opening the battery compartment on the back reveals three official Hasbro branded AAA batteries for a grand total of nine A's. Let's head to the Japanese side of things. Nowadays, Hasbro is pretty calm working with Lego, but that was not the case back in the early 2000s. They partnered with every cheap Lego knockoff under the sun. They were more likely to give you the Transformers license than to give it to Lego. One of these was Diablock, who was bold enough to release these husks of garbage. The Optimus is better than the Bumblebee, but that's the only compliment I can really throw it away. I think I'd like it more if it actually stayed together and didn't break into a million pieces at the slightest bump. I've got to give him credit though, it does functionally transform from vehicle to robot. Swing down the legs, materialize the arms, rotate the waist, unearth the head. 
Oh my god, it's Optimus Prime. A cutesy version of Prime was available in keychain form, as part of a six-pack depicting the Autobots and Starscream. Big-headed figurines of Prime and Megatron hit the Japanese markets as well, in standard and chrome color variations. He would have actually had these proportions in Season 4 had they produced it. A line of six teeny non-transforming Microbots was released, and Optimus Prime was naturally one of them. A line of three non-transforming Takara Tomy Arts pose figures was produced, and Optimus was here as well. Their limbs are mostly completely interchangeable for some pretty cursed results. Transformers Animated had lanyard charms too, once again with standard and silver variations. And I must confess, I am a liar, a fool, and a coward even, because I don't quite have everything. A limited run of officially licensed Optimus, Bumblebee, Megatron, and Starscream plushies were seemingly available as claw machine prizes in Japan. These have never reared their ugly heads on the aftermarkets, implying it must have been a very limited supply. And flipping back to the West, I have never tracked down a pair of Optimus Prime Crocs. How can I even live with myself? And lastly, while we're here, here's some significant memorabilia of the character. Though you could not purchase these at stores, they were not merchandise. Two versions of an Optimus Prime bounce house. The one on the right has never been seen actually existing beyond the schematic. And it may just be an earlier design of the one that was made. Here's a large statue of Prime's Voyager toy seen at various Japanese events between 2010 and 2014. Two detailed costumes of Bumblebee and Optimus, seen in transitional bumper material from the Japanese release of Animated. And two functional, transforming costumes from a meet and greet show in Singapore in 2009. That was a lot of Optimus Prime merchandise, of a wide range of quality. Let's jump straight from the early 2010s to a decade later, and look at 2023's newest rendition, Legacy United, the animated Optimus Prime, designed by Mark Maurer and Koki Yamada. Rather than attempting to capture Animated's art style, the idea was to place these characters' physical details on blockier Generation 1-inspired bodies. The reception to the results has been hit or miss, but the general fanbase reputation is that this Optimus was a clear success. Just look at him, he's awesome! He has incredible articulation, which can be said for most modern Transformers toys. The attention to detail here is absolutely incredible. All the most minute details are carried over. Look at how the tiny molded seats look exactly like the ones from his animation model. The same can be said for the dashboard. They didn't need to do this, but they just wanted to. He comes with his signature axe, which even extends like it does in the show and can be stored on his back for extra added badassery. While the super chunky core that hides the retracted handle does make me prefer the overall look of the axe from the Heroes Toolkit, the actual tangible functionality absolutely makes the Legacy Axe my favorite. Optimus's hands are molded into 5mm ports, Hasbro's new universal approach. Prowl will never hold Optimus's axe. What? <laughs> now, this is epic. As it happens, the original Voyager had 5mm hands as well, meaning their weapons are completely interchangeable. The 2008 Voyager can hold the new axe, and the 2023 Voyager can hold this trash. Believe it or not, he's also backwards compatible with the old Windblade armor, if you have enough scotch tape. Yeah, no, even though the wrist guards can slide into the holes in the fists exactly like the original, they aren't sized properly and can't slide over the wrist. On that note, this light bar detaches and becomes a wrist shield, sort of like the roof of the Cybertronian Mode Deluxe. Why are there three ports all right next to each other here? They have got to be planning an actual Wingblade re-release, right? Hell, it wouldn't even surprise me if the Power Master armor was in the cards. Holes on his back, holes on his feet, holes in his fists. The engineering of the arms would have to be different, but this is legacy, why would it have to be the same? On that note, his body is covered, and I mean covered, in 5mm ports, on his tires, on his siren bar. Prime, what's that behind your ear? Oh, it's a 5mm port. This is for compatibility with Hasbro's newest Hellspawn, Armorizers. Transformers which Revenge of the Fallen jetfire themselves and let their bodies be ripped apart and used as armor by the cooler, better Transformers. Optimus Prime has gutted him and made him into a nice winter coat. Since the Allspark Almanac 2 retconned these monsters from Transwarped into being Rock Lords, I guess I technically have to buy the Legacy Rock Lords now to complete my animated collection. Can someone explain to me why a rock needs to transform into a truck? <laughs> uh, hmm. 
<laughs> There's a pair of wheels under the cab now, but this is because the vehicle's wheel placement now skews far closer to its appearance on the actual animation model, whereas all other releases opted to spread the wheels further apart. Let's finally transform this, shall we? The new figure shares much of its transformation and overall engineering with the deluxe version. However, it is a vast improvement. Whereas the original felt like it was falling apart in your hands when you transformed it, this one feels like the perfected final form of what they were going for back in 2007. This thing's kind of over-engineered to an almost comical degree. You know the simple wheel mechanic on the original? Well now you split the truck bed like this and fold it in half to complete the knee, then this foot-looking flap clicks into place and becomes a foot. And like, <laughs> what just happened? I find that refreshing, honestly. It produces the exact same results, but it's just breathing new life into it. Even though these humps in the middle of the truck bed do not look great, I'm not gonna pretend these look like anything other than a robot's feet sticking out of the back, but they were less intrusive than this. Carrying forward, you just sprawl all of this out. You know the drill, pop out the arms. Everything just folds out and shifts and collapses together. There's another faux chest like the deluxe, but this time the hinge isn't even properly hidden. Look at his arm. It twists as two pieces, allowing the Autobot insignia from robot mode to be completely concealed in vehicle mode, and the stripe in vehicle mode to be hidden in robot mode. It's such a tiny detail to worry about, but it's so cool to me. There's vehicle mode details on the back of his arms now, but who cares? All the vehicle details literally just completely disappear on the animated character's robot modes to simplify their models for animation. It tangibly has to go somewhere, this is a pretty unintrusive place for it. And look at how his wrists hide away! Normally you'd fold it out and there'd be this big ugly gap. But look at this! Why can't all Transformers wrists work like this? So uh, yeah, robot. This mold is heavily rumored to be re-released as Motormaster in 2024. And given this very plunger-shaped axe handle, I wouldn't be surprised if a Toxitron is in the cards. The kids call this a pre-tool, I'm told, and I will gladly purchase them both when they hit the shelves. At TFCon LA 2023, I won a game of Transformers Wheel of Fortune because I knew the Toxitron, Motormaster, and Optimus all shared a mold in the animated line. Funny enough, they're probably all gonna share a mold again. There's definitely some rough patches to this. I feel like every figure designer has to strike a balance between form and function, and there'll have to be some sacrifices in both departments. But for me, I don't mind. I just can't get over how happy this thing makes me. And I felt nothing for that prowl. I had that prowl for a year. There's nothing remarkable about it. This Optimus, though, is genuinely so special to me. It's such a phenomenal reinvention of the character. Thank you, Billion Dollar Corporation Hasbro, for giving me another opportunity to spend money. And that is every animated Optimus figure that's ever been released by Hasbro and Takara Tomy. This was a wildly ambitious video I've been putting off making for over a year now. But the release of the Legacy toy line finally put me over the edge, and I pushed it into production. Huge thank you to my research consultants, Heather Morgan and Bombastic underscore Shark. A lot of this obscure BotCon and Japanese stuff I would not know about at all if not for them. Because I was a six-year-old with no internet access with anime that was airing, whereas they were deep in the trenches. Check out the companion video about Prowl, and look forward to my video about Bumblebee coming pretty soon. For now, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.